Today's project is this. A simple nativity scene. There's only four pieces to it. There's the back and the bottom, the uh, lamb and Mary, Joseph and the baby Jesus are all in one piece. There's one interior cut and the rat and then some uh, some accent cuts, but very easy and I'll show you how to make it step by step. I originally planned on using maple for the figures and walnut for the stand and backer. However, when I checked my wood storage rack, I found I was low on maple, but I had a nice piece of ash left over from some earlier project. The ash will contrast with the walnut just as nicely as the maple, so I decided to go with it for the light colored wood. Both woods needed to be planed down from 13 sixteenths to one half inch thick, and the walnut was wider than needed, so I ripped it to width on my table saw. After stock preparation, the next step in any project is to attach the patterns to the wood for cutting. There are several methods for doing this, and I cover nine of them in another video, which I'll link on the screen and in the description. My favorite method is to use scroll saw tape, and I'll show you how to use it now. I'll leave a link to my source in the description. Scroll saw tape is a double-sided tape that you roll onto the wood where you want to attach the patterns. You should smooth the tape out if there are large air bubbles, then use a utility knife to cut it to width. For long boards like I'm working with here, you'll have to repeat the process several times. You can either use a fingernail or utility knife to pry up a corner of the tape, peel off the backing, then repeat the process for each width of tape you used. One of the advantages of scroll saw tape is that it is transparent, so if there are knots or other defects in the wood, you can see them and avoid placing patterns over them. I arrange these patterns as efficiently as possible, using as little wood as possible, and I'll have a small piece left over at the end. I'll cut that off and save it for some future projects. The figures of Mary Joseph and the baby Jesus are all one piece with only one interior cutout, plus some accent cuts along the edges. The lamb had just one exterior cut and a few accent cuts to add detail to the piece. I'll set this board aside and cut it into sections with my second scroll saw. As it is, it's too long to work comfortably on the scroll saw. I'll use the same technique to add the patterns to the walnut. The short board didn't have any defects, but the long one had a knot I wanted to avoid. I cut this board a little longer so I could avoid that section. The patterns are almost as wide as this board, so the only way to leave the knot out was not to use several inches of the board. I'll cut that section out, but it's big enough to save to make something small from it later. I'm going to start cutting with the two pieces that form the back and the base, and I'll make the inside cut for the star first. This is half inch thick walnut, and my choice for the blade is a number five Pegas modified geometry blade, my preference for this thickness of material. If you would like to learn more about how to choose the correct size blade for any project, I'll leave a link to my video on that topic on the screen and in the description. I threaded the blade through the pilot hole, tightened the upper blade holder, flipped up the tension lever, and then double checked the bottom blade holder for tightness. Then I wiped the dust off my magnifier. I drilled the pilot hole approximately in the middle of the upper part of the star. There are a lot of points on this star, and the angles are so acute that the only practical way to cut this star is from the center out. I cut from the pilot hole along one of the lines until I reached the point. Then I backed the blade to the pilot hole and cut down the next side until I reached the point again. By making the cuts in this manner, all the points are sharp, and I'm not trying to make impossible turns. Done that way, the points would end up more rounded than sharp. The bottom and back could be joined with a butt joint, but I'm going to follow the pattern and make this slot and tab to give the joint extra strength. This is not a difficult joint to cut, but your cuts need to be accurate to ensure a good fit. A loose fit will not look good, and it will not be as strong as it should be. Too tight a fit may make it impossible to add glue and join the pieces without breakage. The tab on the bottom must have sharp 90 degree corners for a perfect fit. Rather than make the turn by pivoting the workpiece, I cut right to the intersection and then stopped. Then I backed the blade out and cut across the board to form the outside of the tab. Now it could come in from the edge I just created to make the shortcuts on either side of the tab. Then I made the cuts on either side of the tab and knew I had two perfect 90 degree inside and outside corners. The half circle cut for the front of the bottom was a piece of cake. For the back, I started by cutting across the board. 
Now I needed to cut this slot, so I cut each side first, but when I get to the intersection for the right side of the slot, there was no alternative cutting method available. I cut right to the intersection, backed off slightly on the blade, pivoted the workpiece 90 degrees, and then made the cut for the length of the slot. From there, I moved on to the outside cut for the oval-shaped back. This is about as easy as it gets for scroll saw cutting, just following a line around from one side of the board to the other. I was careful to ensure my fingers were to the side of the blade at the end to avoid cutting myself. The scroll saw is safe if used properly, but it will cut you as well as wood if your concentration wanders. You'll notice that I took the long board containing six sets of figures and used my band saw to cut it into three parts, making them a workable size for cutting on the scroll saw. As usual, I made the interior cutout first. I left the number five blade in the saw because I thought it would still be large enough to handle the half inch ash, even though ash is a very hard wood. If I'm not mistaken, ash is used to make baseball bats. I cut from the pilot hole to one of the corners on the bottom of this shape, backed the blade up to the pilot hole, then cut to the other bottom corner. I backed the blade up to one of the corners, pivoted the workpiece, then made the cut along the bottom. With that little waist piece out of the way, it was easy to swivel the workpiece for the next cut up along the inside of the square. When I reached the intersection at the top of the square, I backed the blade up slightly, turned the workpiece 90 degrees, then started cutting again. I followed the same procedure for the last corner. The piece with the figures of Mary, the baby Jesus, and Joseph has several accent cuts. These add detail to the piece, making it more realistic looking. There are three ways to approach making these cuts. The first method is to cut around the outside of the piece, then come back and cut the accents. The second is to make each accent cut as you come to it. And the third is to combine the two and make some of the accent cuts as you go, then come back and make the rest at the end. The approach I take depends on the pattern, and for this one, I chose the third option. There are places where it's easy to cut freely, freely along with the pattern and make the accents as you go, but sometimes the accent is at such an angle to the outside cut that it interrupts the flow of cutting. Then it's best to continue cutting and come back and make that cut later. You should use the approach that works best for you. One of the reasons I like using scroll saw tape is that it peels off easily without leaving any residue. I set the figures against the back and bottom, and they look great. There's a tiny gap where the back and bottom meet, but the figures cover most of it, so I decided to use the slot and tab construction with the rest of the sets I'm making. The lamb is a separate piece, and I made the outside cut first, then I came back to cut the accents. I'm enlarging this picture by 300%, so it might be a little on the blurry side. There are accents on either side with chart 90 degree cuts, so it's easiest to make them this way. There are also two small accents for the ears, and because of their angles, the only practical way to make them is after the outside waist has been cut away. With all the pieces cut, it's time for the glue up, but first I wanted to take the sharpness off the edges. I didn't need to round them over enough to need the router table, I just needed to soften them a little. A quarter sheet of 120 grit sandpaper does the job nicely by hand. Before I applied glue, I did a quick test fit, and the two pieces fit together with a friction fit, no persuasion needed, so I knew when I added glue they would fit together perfectly. I quickly looked at the pieces to remind myself where to add the glue to make sure I didn't apply any two parts that would not be touching. I squeezed a drop of glue onto the top of the tab, the sides, and the two surfaces that would mate with the back piece. Then I used my fingertip to spread the glue out evenly. For the back piece, I added glue to the slot where the tab was to fit, and along the bottom edges of the back where it would meet with the base. I slid the pieces together and then added an F-clamp to pull the pieces together tightly. That took a bit of fussing to accomplish because the clamp wasn't deep enough to get the pad to the center of the semicircle base. I started to apply glue to the back of the figures when I, fortunately, realized I had glued the wrong side of the back to the base. The star cutout needed to be on the left side of the back because it would be directly over Mary kneeling next to the baby Jesus in the manger. Joseph is standing and would block part of the star if I left the pieces in this position. Thankfully, the glue was still wet, and flipping the back around was easy. I wiped off as much of the glue as I could, and then I sanded off the rest. Otherwise, if the glue was allowed to dry in that spot, the finish wouldn't stick when I applied it later. 
The piece with Mary, the baby Jesus, and Joseph is glued to the bottom of the back, so I added glue to those two spots on the piece with the figures. After spreading the glue with my fingertip, I moved the figures into place. I wanted a good, strong bond, so I used three F clamps to hold the figures to the back. I used two clamps on the bottom and one on the top, which should be sufficient pressure to ensure good contact between the surfaces. The weight of the clamps provides sufficient downward pressure against the bottom. And another project is complete. I finished the desktop nativity with several coats of warm satin spray polyurethane finish. I would appreciate and will respond to any comments on this project. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so, and click the notification bell to be alerted whenever I release a new video. But you don't have to wait until then. The suggested video to watch next is linked on the screen right now.